What's up, ladies? Welcome back to another Friday episode of To The Core, my Friday episode of Revitalized Womanhood. I feel very inspired today to talk about overspending. Not just overspending, unnecessary overspending. It's like society has trained us to put our self-worth and our self-value at how much we can spend or at how much stuff we have or how beautifully decorated our front porch is for each changing holiday. You know what I mean? I understand the concept behind keeping up with the Joneses. I know where it originated from. I get it. But why is it this continual need to to keep up with. What is it? Who are these Joneses? Who are they? They don't exist anymore. I understand where it came from. I get it. Who are they now? Who are the Joneses? Do we really care about keeping up with them? And are the Joneses for you, your neighbor down the street that has a fancy car and a super nice house and always in the designer clothes and are they your Joneses? Because you don't know what's in their bank account. They could be riddled with debt and financed to the hilt and just putting on a show. You know, it's like the world of social media. Here's a perfect example. Before we left to go travel, Rick and myself and our kids, we had to fit everything we wanted to keep with us for whatever extended amount of time we were going to be gone. And we didn't want to pack more. We had been watching these Rick Steves videos on how to tour Europe and and getting ready for what to expect and whatever. And, and the big highlighted message throughout all of these discs is pack less, pack light. You never get back from a trip and complain Gee, I wish I would have packed more. Gee, I wish I could have hauled a heavier bag across Europe. You never, never, you never say that. You always get everywhere you go. You know this. Am I right, ladies? You get on this cruise ship with all of this stuff that you've just packed and you don't even unpack half of it or you don't even wear half of it. So many times on trips, I still do this and I'm I'm getting so much better at packing like very minimal I still do this. I get to the places where I'm at. I just did it in Costa Rica. I remember I packed all of these things and and I really didn't pack that much and my clothes fit in very small spaces. But I still, I got there and I never really changed my clothes, honestly, (laughs) as bad as that sounds. But the weather is just kind of perfect for you just wear this pair of leggings or shorts and you get in the water or you get in the ocean or you get in the river or you put a swimsuit on underneath it and you go and anyway the point of that sorry the point of that rant let me bring it back in so I remember I was getting ready to go on my very first trip to Europe and I was so excited I was going to be able to take these beautiful pictures in front of these beautiful places that I've always imagined But in my brain, I'm imagining these pictures like standing in front of the Eiffel Tower wearing a beautiful dress or, you know, in my brain, I'm I'm imagining these set up staged pictures when in reality, it's me trying to chase my two year old away from the garbage cans where the rats are or, you know what I mean? It's 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 the weirdest things. It's trying to drag your eight-year-old away from the souvenirs and it's it's not one person staged standing beautifully posed in this gorgeous outfit in front of the Eiffel Tower that is so Instagram you know the whole Instagram versus reality concept it is so beyond truthful the concept of that that it's it's sad so here I was thinking that I needed to pack all of these things so that I could get these beautiful pictures. And and it, it disappointed me. You know what I mean? It disappointed me. How unfortunate that I was thinking that way and and not that I wasn't enjoying our time there. Of course I was. But I was 
disappointed that I wasn't getting these pictures that I had had imagined in my mind. And what does that mean? It means I need the hat, I need the shoes, I need the outfit, I need I need all the things. So I guess you could say it it derives from still this whole keeping up with the Joneses is just amplified. It's not just in our neighborhoods anymore. It's coming across our phones through social media. And we know that. So I love this. It's not really a quote. It's kind of a statement that Glennon Doyle said. And and I'll tell you, it's she said, it, it really stuck with me. She said, beneath every materialistic item that we feel like we need, that we feel like we need, there is an actual underlying emotional need, right? So something is missing or not being fulfilled. So for ladies, I'm talking to you just because I can relate to you. And I don't know how many men are listening to the Revitalized Womanhood podcast, but you know. So ladies, what is it in you that is missing when you feel like you need to go buy these decorations at Target or when you feel like you need to go into the buckle and spend X amount of money on jeans or, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, whatever. What is it in you that you're missing? So you look up the psychology of spending and it talks about people who have a problem with spending are usually trying to mask a feeling that they don't want to have, like anxiety or stress or depression. You know, it's, it's, it's a way to mask these feelings that we don't want because shopping, spending those moments of joy, you know, that we're getting, we know that it releases dopamine. It releases that into our body and so it feels good. And now they've actually gone even further with the science of this and they've discovered that online spending actually is more enjoyable than going into the store and getting something. I, I didn't know that. It blew my mind when I just read that. It's it's because now, along with the excitement of getting something new, you have extended that excitement by delaying the moment it gets there. So Rick has this philosophy where he, he hates surprises because he loves to tell me about the surprises because he wants me to be excited the whole time leading up to the surprise. So he's the worst secret keeper ever because he wants to just tell me because he wants me to be excited for it. So that's what they're saying about this, this new study about online spending. It's higher levels of dopamine because now you have the anticipation of the package along with the actual purchased product, right? So that's super weird. Um, I just want to go back to back to the self-worth of it though. So what is it in us that we're missing? So why do we feel like we need to buy so much stuff? I want to say, instead of maybe spending money on these materialistic things that we are trying to prove our self-worth through, like, hey, look at me, I have the fanciest car, or hey, look at me, I have the newest sneakers at the gym and they're so cute or you know what is it that we can do to help build our own self-worth our own value that has nothing to do with spending money on materialistic external things stop comparing yourself to others that is the first most important thing I could give that advice to anyone. Stop comparing yourself to others. I used to have this uh, philosophy when I, when I had my blog. I mean, it's still there, but when I was actually writing on my blog, I had this philosophy called comparenting, right? Your, your parenting skills, you're comparing your parenting skills to everybody else on social media or whoever you, whoever are in your circle of friends. You're comparing, you're constantly comparing yourself to, I'm not as good of a mom as she is because she's 
preparing these homemade meals for her kids or I'm not as good of a mother as she is because she's homeschooling and gets to spend that extra time with her kids or you know what I mean so it's the same thing with my value isn't as high as Janie's down the road because she obviously is better than me because she has a better car she has a better house she has her kids always look beautiful and well well dressed I you know whatever that's not value what where are you putting the value in that that's that's not value stop comparing yourself to other people next do what makes you feel good constantly women are in this tug of war that's the best way to say it. this tug of war between their internal self and society it's like i'm too big I'm too small. I'm a brunette. I want to be a blonde. You know, I mean, whatever it is, it's it's we're constantly being told what we should be or what we shouldn't be or that we, you know, have this have this image that we have to maintain. Why? What what image? What what's the perfect image? What's the perfect body? What's the perfect amount of makeup to wear? What's the perfect hairstyle what <laughs> I'm sorry if you can see the YouTube episode of this I'm, I'm very my facial expressions are very but what what who who are these people that are telling us what we're supposed to look like wh- how we're supposed to eat how we're supposed to dress how we're supposed to wear our makeup how we're supposed to parent how we're supposed to be wives how we're supposed to be oh we're supposed to be sexy but not too sexy because then you're slutty oh we're supposed to be fit but not too fit then you're vain Oh, we're supposed to, you know, like you've got to be okay with yourself. So do what makes you feel good. Next, make things happen. Make things happen. Go get the things that you want to achieve, right? Whatever that is, start saying yes to things maybe that make you uncomfortable I have I have one of the ladies in my group and she got out of her comfort zone by her her husband asked her to go on a bike ride uh, and it's an electric bike and and she felt nervous about it and she said I just said yes I didn't overthink it I just said yes and they drove like clear to the other town or whatever and I'm like wow that that's such an amazing win that's good for you you went out and you got it you got out of your comfort zone and you pushed yourself past past that and did something and came out of it excited and you had fun. I, We were in Bali. This is the funniest story. And this is actually not a good example because I stopped after this, but this is a funny story. So we were in Bali and it was the first time I had ever ridden a scooter. Rick rented us both scooters. And so it's Rick and myself and Castle and Hayes. So I think Castle was eight and Hayes was five or nine and six, whatever. So they're not like tiny or anything like that. But I needed to have one on my scooter and Rick needed to have one on his scooter. We're out in the middle of the the rice paddies in Bali. And to get out to the rice paddies, the trail that you're riding on, your scooter, the trail is literally the size of your scooter wheel. Your scooter tire is the size of the road that gets you out to the the rice paddies and out to the villa we were staying in. And so (laughs) it's just a whole other added element of terrified. I've never ridden a scooter before. So Rick's sitting here trying to teach me how to do the throttle, but then not so much that I reach for the brake and and what do you guys call it a whiskey throttle or something I don't know so you when you reach for the brake and you accidentally throttle it even more right you accelerate (laughs) so here of course he's setting me up for failure doing this so instantly I get on this scooter go down the little lane from the villa we were staying in and there's this little um like concrete driveway just like a curb driveway thing. It's not huge, but it it was steep a little bit. So I have to balance between, I should have just put my feet down, honestly, like hindsight. But so I get down to it and at the bottom of it, I go to hit the brake, but of course, accelerated, pulled the throttle back and I flew out into the rice paddies. Not kidding you, just like right out into the rice paddies. 
And of course, so of course the scooter goes down and I jump off and I'm like, oh my gosh, what just happened? And this sweet little, little old lady and her daughter out in the rice paddies working and they didn't say a word to me, just stood up, picked up my scooter, walked it back to the road and stood it, stood it up for me. And Rick comes out and he's like, what just happened? So anyway, that was a long story around just doing something, even though you're uncomfortable, you're totally uncomfortable. I would never have that hilarious story. I'm glad I I said I will not have my children on this scooter with me. So I did make that stand. So Rick rode with both of our kids on his scooter. But I wouldn't have had that moment and that, that story that's hilarious. And we laugh about it all the time. And it gets told to numerous people to make me look like an idiot. And it's so fun. But it's one of those moments that I was so uncomfortable and I just had to push past it. I just had to. So anyway, sorry about that. That was kind of a long way around for that. All right. So just start saying yes to things. Okay. Get out of your comfort zone. There's the only way you're going to figure out what you can do, what you're capable of is to actually just start doing things. Next, don't beat yourself up when things don't go the way that you feel like they should go. Don't put so much pressure on yourself that you are basically setting yourself up for for failure anyway, because you're, you're putting all of this pressure on yourself to make it perfect or to make it right or to get this end result or whatever, whatever. You have to acknowledge that you are human. You're going to make mistakes. Why is it that we're okay to look at someone else that makes a mistake or look at someone else and give them the grace and say, you know what? It's fine. You'll get it next time. It'll be okay. But we are incapable of looking into ourselves and saying, it's fine. I'll get it next time. Tomorrow's a new day. We'll start again. We'll try again tomorrow. It's, we're incapable of doing that. Why, why is it so hard to do it for ourselves, but we can do it for every other person, especially wives and mothers. We do this for our husbands. We do this for our kids or gr- girls, ladies that you're not married and don't have kids. You do this for your girlfriends. I know you do. I know that you are constantly trying to build up your girlfriends. And when they call you, you're, you're saying it's fine. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. So don't beat yourself up next. Only you can be you. This, when I wrote this down, I was kind of laughing because in the back of my head, I still hear the review. One of the very first reviews I got when I re- I released, I, I only had like the first three episodes released on the Revitalized Womanhood podcast. And there was a review on there and someone wrote that they were looking for more, and I'm not mad about it. It's fine. It just gives me such good content to keep coming back to, but They said, I was looking for, I'm disappointed because I was looking for more like, I don't know how to explain it, like tools to actual, I don't, I don't really know, like tools to actual, not advice, but I don't know. Anyway, basically it was, they wanted more solid information, like, like maybe that Rick would give, not me, because I don't know how to say X amount of numbers minus this amount of days in the month and equals, you know, I'm not that person. I don't do that. But it basically insinuated that they were disappointed that I was this rah, rah cheerleader girl. You do you. You're the best you're going to be. And that's okay. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like glitter, glitter words. Emily Frazella calls them glitter words. And that's not me. I'm not telling you you're the best you are now because you're not. You can always be better. There's always room for growth. There's always another book you can read. There's always time to do a one-minute plank. There's literally always time. You could do it anywhere. You could stop walking down the street and do a one-minute plank or do 10 push-ups. There's there's no excuse. There You could always eat better. You could always drink more water. There's no excuse. So for anyone to say that I'm the best I'm going to be, that's never accurate. That's not right. So no, I am not a glitter word person. I'm not a woo woo cheerleader. I am a supporter and I am 
team, you, if you are going to put in the work, I'm going to cheer you on. Anyway, so that's what leads me to this one. Only you can be you. That is true. Only you can be you. You've got to be okay with that. You are you. You're not going to change. You have to be okay with who you are. Yes, you can acknowledge that there's some things about your personality that maybe you don't like or maybe you don't appreciate or you don't think are working in your best interests. So acknowledge those. Be intentional about those. Say, okay, you're not going to change the person you are, but you could flex the muscles that you haven't been using recently. You know, you can strengthen those muscles. Strengthen if you have social anxiety and it terrifies you to walk up to another person and have a conversation, start strengthening those muscles. What in in the gym, what do we do if you can't lift 20 pounds? You start with threes, right? Or you start with the light weights and you do more reps and you start working up to more weight. That's what you do. You have to strengthen those muscles. Anything is a muscle, if you think about it that way. Anything as far as in your habits, in your personality, in your characteristics, whatever. You have the ability to change who you are and you have the ability to change the outcome of your actions. Ah, oh, sorry. Did that make sense? That was kind of weird. So those are ways to help build your self-worth is what I was going. That's, that's where I was going with that. Those are, those are five tips and tricks for finding more value in yourself than spending money, going out and spending all of this money on unnecessary crap, on all this stuff that just ends up becoming, honestly, you know what? Here's a full circle. Honestly, ends up becoming the crap that you scream at your family about that's cluttering your house. Seriously, you're out buying more shoes that your husband and your kids are leaving all over the house. You're out buying more toys for your baby that doesn't even, the baby doesn't even care. The baby would rather play with a toilet paper roll. Honestly, we all know that. Mothers, we all know that, but yet we still go out and buy the newest toy for them or whatever, whatever. So that's even the funnier, sick sick in the head part about spending money on unnecessary crap is that that crap turns into clutter and chaos in your home that then turns into fights with your family, with your husband, with yourself. You end up rage cleaning the crap that you shouldn't even have bought in the first place. <laughs> I just had a full circle moment. That's hilarious. So Sorry, I've got notes here. You guys, you got to know me. If if you know that I I would get going down so many different roads if I didn't have something to kind of keep me on track here. But the other ways to avoid unnecessary spending, obviously you have to mentally be okay with, like I said, be okay with not keeping up with the Joneses. That's in our brains. I had to get over it. When we were traveling, I had to figure out that guess what? Real life does not look like these gorgeous flowing dresses running down the promenade in Amalfi, Italy, or in Positano, drinking your limoncello in the darling sun hat and the, you know, whatever. That is not real life. That is staged, folks. Real life is your kid not sitting there eating lunch because he wants to just be out throwing rocks at the beach and everybody being mad because he's throwing rocks at the beach and they're just trying to lay out and be have a good relaxing time. <laughs> That's real life. Or chasing your toddler to make sure they don't run into the ocean and drown. Or, you know, pushing your kid on a swing and not even caring about the fact that you are in Italy because you have little kids and they just want to catch lizards and be pushed on the swing. So... That's real life. That's that's what it's about. Oh, oh yeah. The other thing that was funny with with that is is uh, did I already make the point? I don't think I made the point about the people that rent the planes and rent the cars to take pictures of next to. You know what I mean? That is the funniest thing that people do. That people spend 
obscene amounts of money to rent planes and rent cars and take pictures next to them. Like they probably go do it at people's houses too. They probably go to like open houses and take pictures in houses that aren't even their houses. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, get real with yourself. Why do you need to use stuff as validation? We already went over that. So not to beat a dead horse, but also there's the the budgeting side of this. So the reason that you need to take a look at the overspending and the unnecessary spending is also because it is harming. It's harmful not just for you, for the reasons that I've already pointed out, but it's harmful for your family. It's harm, harmful for your future goals. It's harmful for the things that maybe you would like to see happening in the future, like having, you know, more, I shouldn't say the big nice house because, <laughs> but if that's what your fulfillment is, if that's what your abundance looks like, get it, get the big house. I'm not saying don't get the big house. I'm just saying don't buy the big house and overextend yourself and not be able to pay for the big house and be in complete debt all your life. I'm saying project what your future looks like and set a budget in line with the goals for where that that will get you. You know what I mean? So it's, Rick always says, it's not what you make, it's what you spend. So take a look at your finances. We already talked about this. Take a look at your checking account. See what's going out of there. See, it, it adds up. Oh my gosh, it adds up so fast. You're using these debit cards and these credit cards and it's, you have no idea that you know, how many times, oh, it just seems like a $5 coffee. But when you add that up times 30, that's a lot of money, right? So take a look at your finances, look at your account, sit down and go through it and say, okay, we're paying $12 a month for the Canva subscription. Oh, well, I don't really need that. That's such a silly thing. $12 a month, you know, once isn't a big deal, but a month, 12 times, that's, that adds up. Sit down and think, okay, we've got Netflix, we've got HBO Max, we've got, what are they all now? What's Yellowstone on now? They made us sign up for a new one, Peacock or something. Paramount, Paramount now and Disney and oh my gosh, all of the streaming apps. We've got everything. Do you need everything? You don't need everything. I guarantee you because it's just like, it's just like what old TV used to be. There's nothing on. You've got 5,000 channels and nothing on. Literally, you've watched everything there's possibly to watch on Netflix. <laughs> so go through, get rid of some things, cut some things, trim the fat, right? Um, then set the goals. Sorry, set the goals. Talk to your husband, talk to your spouse, talk to your partner, talk to your, you know, if you're, if you're single, set your own goals. What do you want to do with that money? What do you want to set aside that money for? Where where are you going with it? Anyway, sorry. I'm kind of like rambling now. I feel I feel bad. I'm sorry. But that was the point I wanted to make. Look at why you are spending the money. What is the is it something that you're trying to fill a void in yourself or in your own life? Is it because you're trying to keep up with the Joneses? Is it why? Why are you spending? Take a look at that. Then realize if it is what you're saying it is, there's there's ways out of it. You don't need to be buying all this crap, okay? You know, figure out more ways to produce than consume, right? Figure out better ways to use your time and energy that are adding to your life instead of taking away from your life, you know? All right. I hope that wasn't too much of a rant. It was a long way around to get to that point. You guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of To The Core. Don't forget, if you haven't signed up already for my free newsletter, my weekly newsletter, just some thoughts go on in my brain coming out in that newsletter and you get the first sneak peek of who the guests are going to be on the next episodes and you know just the first in the nose to know of the up and comings of revitalized womanhood thank you guys have a great weekend